wisdom and insight for worship leaders and music teams all around the world. For more details, email thewell at planetshakers.com. Hello, everybody, and welcome to The Well. Welcome, welcome to The Well. We are so happy to be here, aren't we, guys? Yes, very indeed. happy. Yes. Normally on The Well, it's Pastor Sam, BJ, and myself, but we've extended the invitation to the lovely Nickaroods. Rudy over this side, Chelsea over this side. Make some noise for Thanks, them. Guys. Good to be here. And uh, we are coming to you live from Planet Shakers Awakening 2016 in Melbourne, Australia. Who's having a good time? It is amazing. It has been incredible. We've only had uh, three sessions so far, but God's been moving so powerfully. But what I've loved the most is the fact that everyone who's in this auditorium is so passionate for God and it's so incredible to lead you all. So I think you should give yourselves a pat on the back. Yeah, and a round of applause yeah. too. <laughs> no, that, that is very good. Well, you know, there's a lot of people here who don't know a lot about us individually and people watching as well on the internet. So starting with you, Chelsea, why don't you explain a bit about who you are and what you do? Yes. Hi, I'm Chelsea. It's a good start. You're from um, America. I'm from America uh, originally, but I've been in Australia for eight years now, so I think I'm one of you. Is that all right? Yes? Um, but I work at Planet Shakers. I help head up our School of Music, the School of Creative Arts. If you want lessons, you can head up to the soccer stand after the session. Plug right there. Um, I also head up Planet Shakers Theatre, which is basically our performing arts, our drama, all that fun stuff. And we have a ball. We do have a ball. Next to Chelsea is BJ. So BJ. Hi, everybody. How you doing? My name is BJ, I'm the worship pastor at Planet Shakers Church and I get to look after our people, do our rostering and get to write some songs as well. And uh, yeah. Next to Pastor BJ, we have it's Pastor me. Sam. I know there's two Pastor Sams at this conference. I mean, my goodness, how good is that? But yeah, I'm married to Russell and you know, many years ago he started Planet Shakers and I've just been able to come on this amazing journey with him and of course we pastor a church in Melbourne and we have a number of churches now, campuses around um, the world. Anyone from our Cape Town campus? Yeah, hi guys. <laughs> That's great. Um, <laughs> I'm Joff, J-O-T-H. Hi Joff. You might think that's a strange name when my brother was little. He called me Jonathan, not Jonathan. So that's where the name came from. And uh, I love, love music, loved it ever since I was seven years old. And well, since I was even younger, but started officially doing music when I was seven years old. And uh, been doing it ever since, and uh, been doing it ever since. And I basically, I've had two coffees today, so I can feel the caffeine moving through my body. And I'm about to have a third, which is gonna be great. And I'll be talking even faster. But then um, I look after all the music here at Planet Shakers, help produce the albums, write the songs, worship lead. And we get to travel around the world. We do all that kind of fun stuff. But we, you know, we work hard. We believe in giving our best for God. And- uh, Can you please speak faster? I'll try, I'm gonna authorise. On my right, on my left, we have uh, Pastor Rudy. Give it up for Pastor Rudy. Hi, Joff. Hey, mate. <laughs> Haven't had enough coffees myself. <laughs> Hi, everyone. How are you? Sounds like such a, such a juxtaposition sitting next to you. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, uh, I am Rudy. I'm uh, one of the pastors on staff at Planet Shakers. I run our college ministry, our university ministry. Got any uni students here today? <laughs> Holla. And, uh, and so that's, uh, that's what I get to do day to day. I'm also part of the worship team. I've been a musician since I was five, which is a number of years ago now. You can guess that number, but I won't. Um, but uh, no, it's, it's great. We get the opportunity to do a lot of wonderful things. But uh, yeah, so my role here is pastor and dancer. <laughs> you, I'm a what? liturgical dancer. You're a dancer? Yes. What's your, what's your signature move? Um, Tough to say. I haven't quite warmed up. Okay, right you now. just better show everyone. Could you demonstrate, we know, please? We know the, the Rudy. We do the Rudy. The Rudy? Yes, no, I got that. Oh, so that's, uh, that's a signature move of mine. I like Archie, it. I came up with that. And what's BJ's got a signature move in, in when he's leading oh, praise? On <laughs> Come on. Everyone stomp your feet on the ground. You've got to get the anticipation. Ready? Ooh. It's called the bowling praise move. It's the anointing. Strike! Someone catch yeah. it, someone catch it. And uh, Chelsea, do you have a signature move? Nah. 
Okay, great. Pastor Sam, do you have a signature move? Yeah, this is mine. Like, it's just constantly... I mean, how many photos have I got just with the arm? This one. That's all I got. It's the kind of like... Oh, yeah. Yeah. Just like that. Yeah, yeah. that's great. So, every week on The Well, we love to share something that God's laid on our heart to encourage people all over the place um, in God. So, today we have the wonderful Pastor VJ going to share with us what's well, on you, your heart. Thank yeah, you. Thank you, Pastor. So, uh, let me see a show of hands here. Who's, who's actually serving on a worship team here today? Cool singers, band musicians, cool. Well, you're awesome. Thank you for doing what you do for your local church. You are incredible. Um, you're actually on my heart today. Uh, usually I share about some things that I'm thinking about. This is to do with me as well, but you are on my heart today, everyone watching online as well. I've got Ephesians 3.19 here and it says, uh, and that you may come to know practically through personal experience, the love of Christ, which far surpasses mere knowledge without experience, that you may be filled up throughout your being to all the fullness of God so that you may have the richest experience of God's presence in your lives. Somebody say overflow. overflow. <laughs> now to him who is able to carry out his purposes and to do super abundantly more than all we dare ask and and or think infinitely beyond our greatest prayers, hopes or dreams according to his power that is at work, at work within us. God is wanting to reveal himself to you this week, friends. Wherever you've come from, whatever you're experiencing in your teams, God is wanting to do something that surpasses anything that you could dream up in your imagination. And all the creative people who imagine things all the time said, yeah, so uh, I just want to I just want to draw my uh, your attention to one more little scripture here, and this is a real special one to me at the moment. Exodus three two four. The angel of the Lord appeared to him in a blazing flame of fire. Appeared to Moses, that is, from the midst. of... Um, of a bush and he looked and behold the bush was on fire yet it was not consumed so Moses said I must turn away from the flock and see this great sight why the bush is not burned up and as soon as he turned away the Lord called to him and said Moses Moses and then Moses said here I am and so this week I wonder could awakening be your burning bush, where we just turn away from everything that's going on back at our home churches, everything that you're facing and everything that you're going, going through and you're inclining your ears saying, God, here I am. And I believe, I believe worship leader, musician, uh, singer, that as you incline your ear to God this week, that He is going to exceed everything that you could dare dream or imagine. He is going to over flow you in Jesus' name. Awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. That's worthy that of a round of applause. That is so good. Yeah. Come oh, on, thanks, who receives guys. that today? Amen. We want that burning bush experience, don't we? Yeah. And that's why we put on um, our awakenings. It's not, you know, just to deliver a bunch of songs or get together for a fun time, even though we have lots of fun and usually lose our voices. But we put this on for your own personal encounter with Jesus, face to face. That's what it's been ever since it began and that's what it still is today. We want to provide an environment for every single one of you to have that supernatural encounter yeah. with God. We don't want to lift up the name of Planet Shakers. We want to lift up the name of Jesus. But we also want to praise and worship um, and lead you in in this wonderful praise and worship so that you can hear Him, feel Him, see Him, encounter Him, get healed by Him, uh, have dreams and visions planted in your heart by Him. This is all about Jesus. It always has been, it always will be till the day I die. And that's why, you know, we want to encourage you as uh, just people of God to um, listen to what BJ was saying and, and take this opportunity to turn away from all of those distractions and see Him. And so we're believing tonight could be the most incredible encounter that you're ever gonna have. Yeah. 
Would you believe for that, do you think? Yeah. Those of you watching online or watching later on in a podcast, why don't you take some time wherever you're watching and turn away and say, okay, God, I want to see you. I want to touch you. I want to experience you because that's what it's all about, us and Jesus, right? Yeah. Right? Right. Yeah, cool. Well, why don't we talk about last night and even this morning, what's happened, recap on all that's happened creatively and even the uh, effort and work that we put into leading up to um, this. A lot so more work goes in than effort. you think. Oh my goodness. How long did that intro, that video intro go for? Like in length? Yes. Well, probably three minutes. Three minutes. Last night. Yeah. How many hours do you think that we all put into that? We put a lot. Well, I don't know, over 100 easy. Um, I know. And it goes like that. <laughs> Did you enjoy the intro last night though? <laughs> and, and the dances, like the dance, the dance went for like two minutes. Yeah. And it's gone like that. I know. But so much work goes, so who's done a, a production in your own church before? You, yeah. you, you kind of know how much work goes into it, right? Yeah. And um, you know, you can, you can do hardly anything and, and it'll be bad, but you can do a lot and it'll be great. And that's just some really wisdom that I want you to take away today. Um, write wow. that down. Wow, that's amazing. But it's true, like we want to celebrate you today. I know there's lots of hours that go into everything yeah. that people experience. And that's part of laying down your life for Christ, yeah. giving up your time, your energy, your creative gifts, um, sewing in hours and hours and hours so someone can come into a venue like this and go, oh, wow, God, oh my goodness, I'm in this incredible environment. Environment. I'm going to seize this opportunity and touch God. So good job for every person that has done that. Good totally. job, Joth. You, you know, we, we really do believe in giving God our best. We, we talk about it in praise and worship. And, you know, it says in the Bible, do everything you do unto the Lord, not unto man. And so when we're doing these tracks, when we're doing these intros, when we're doing these songs, we just want to bring glory to God. And uh, it's, it's always been about the encounter, like Pastor Sam said. Every light, every sound, every note that we play is about creating an atmosphere of praise and worship and, and where God can come and invade that place. And I wanna encourage every single person here today, everyone watching online, that um, you know, don't lose sight of that. Every Sunday, every midweek service that you do, you are shaping and creating an atmosphere for God to move. So give it your best. That means practice up, learn all your songs, um, give God your best in your, in your skill, in investing in your instruments. That's speaking to some people right here, right now. Um, you know, put your best, give God your best because He's worthy of it, amen? Anything else that guys want to add about last night? Yeah, I, I, yeah. I thought last night was wonderful. It was. Yeah. It was wonderful. It was wonderful. Special. And I think, I think all the hours of effort um, paid off for us here on stage in regards that I felt like it was easy. Yeah. Um, it was peaceful. And just following on from what Joth was saying is, is, you know, we do put in hours of effort for something that can be over in a moment. Um, but aren't we so glad we serve a God who can change a life? in a moment. Yeah. And, uh, and so this is obviously the reason that we put all this time into it. We've been having meetings for months now, talking about what flooring to use, what lights to use, the stage design, what LEDs to have, and, and all of it goes into, sure, we want to present a brilliant product, but it, it's not about the product, it's about the encounter, um, yeah. that we would do all of these things that would meld together to lead someone into an encounter with Jesus. And uh, so I thought I had a wonderful time last night. I hope you all did too, so. It was wonderful. And you know what, we wanna honour, as you can see happening right here, Chelsea's getting their mic swapped out. We wanna honour all the production men and women Absolutely. involved in an event like this. They're serving behind the scenes. Let's give them a round of applause. They, they were here on Sunday morning, is that right? They were here early hours, Sunday morning, setting everything up. And it's Great. the same thing, like so much hard work goes in behind the scenes. And you know, on that note, why don't you really make an effort to encourage your own production guy in your own church? You know, that sometimes they can get that, the whole thing of, you know, they're behind the scenes and they just get orders barked at them. But they are as much a part of the worship team as people on the stage. They deserve as much respect, as much honour as people on the stage because Amen. they're giving their best for God. Yeah. And so, you know, how you communicate to them, how you honour them, how you encourage them, why don't we go to a new level in that as well? Yeah. I definitely think we should go to a new level in communication because um, people will say to me, oh, Sam, so many people must tell you that you do a great job or that was wonderful worship. And I go, 
Ah, uh, no, <laughs> not hardly any. And I think sometimes we take for granted that someone else is communicating what we're feeling. But I reckon we should start in our teams, in our churches, in our families to put some words um, out there to encourage people, not just think about it, not just go, oh, in our minds, oh, that's so lovely. But to get it out there and say, you know what, you did a great job. You know what, you're wonderful. You know what, you're amazing. And, and really take this communication to the next level because, you know, it's true. So many people pay a price for us to encounter God. And so let's, let's be the ones to, um, yeah, just share the love a bit more, I reckon. Totally. And the Bible says encourage people to good works. Mm. And, you know, I, I've definitely done some bad works musically and people like Pastor Sam or people, leaders over me have encouraged me to do better. And that's how I've gotten better. So if you're not satisfied with the skill level or, you know, what the fruit that that person's producing, why don't you encourage them and, and believe for great fruit to come from it? Well, the next segment on the well is question and answers. And we love to give everybody the opportunity to a- ask a question and uh, we try our best to answer them. Usually we get them emailed in and you can email any question you want to the well at planetshakers.com and normally we'll read out the questions online, but here we thought we'll do it live. So we have two people roaming on mics. The first person is Jesse, who is over here. Everyone wave to Jesse. Jesse is our, one of our awesome guitarists and is involved in uh, Planet Uni as well. And on our left here, we have Stephen, who is one of our incredible BVs and also one of our pastors here at Planet Shakers. He is also a phenomenal opera singer. Sing us something uh, operatic, Steve. That's lovely. That's lovely. Jesse, would you like to uh, sing a note over there? Oh. <laughs> very good. Very, very good. So what we're going to do is if you have a question, you, once you put your hand up right now, one of these guys is going to run to you. Hi, I'm Fleur uh, from Geelong. Uh, my question is in regards to going into free worship. Do you, do you guys practice a set of chords, a certain rift uh, that, okay, if we go off into worship from this song, it's this chord, that chord, this rift, whatever? That's a great question. Uh, we have definitely practiced certain things. Uh, that gives us the ability to go into, but generally we are just feeling it out. And we've got this microphone, uh, as you can see on the keyboard there. That microphone is what we call the MD microphone, which stands for music director. And so Mitch is playing that keyboard and that microphone goes to everyone's in-ears. And so if we're feeling like we wanna go somewhere free form, and Pastor Sam, you know, usually the sign for that is this, isn't it? That means just play whatever, you know. Everyone has their own little signs, that's Pastor Sam's sign. And that means let's just, let's just go somewhere. And then so Mitch on the keyboard will start playing a progression and he might make it up um, and he'll, he'll communicate through that microphone where we're gonna go. Does everybody know what the number system is? Yeah, so the number system is fantastic to learn. Basically the numbers correlate to the chords. So if you're in the key of C, number one is C, number four is uh, F, number five is G, number six is A minor, number two is D minor. And for some of you that's gonna go, but that's okay. You can do some research on that. But the number system is amazing and it gives me the ability out the front, I can just hold fingers up and we go to that number chord in that key. So that's a great thing. If you're not experienced in that, you should dive into that. Anyone wanna add something? Yes, and I think it's important that you just let, when you're starting to go into a free form, just one musician take the lead because I think sometimes there's confusion when we say, okay, now we, we're going to, you know, do something in the spirit and then everyone has a go. Yeah. So I think it's really important, yeah, just to have that one uh, musician. So like we have the keyboard player on that MD and he will take the lead and then we will follow that. But then often we will do... Um, free worship from the bridge or something like that as well because that's that's often um, really easy to do as well and sometimes at Planet Shakers we've had um, songs that have been made up and they've often come off the bridge of something or a tag that we're just repeating over and over and these wonderful um, singers can sing something different over these bridge chords and stuff. Cool. Great, another question. Where are you Stephen? Up and back here. I'm Beverly from the Wine Press Assembly of God in Berwick. If, if you're in a church service um, and, and there's a particular song being sung and, and if the anointing is not on that song, what do you do as a flock member? 
I think the best thing to do is um, not be too concerned <laughs> and to try and connect with God personally. And look, of course, there'll be moments when uh, a leader might switch songs and uh, the presence of God is not on that song as much as the previous song. So as musicians and singers, we, we can feel that and notice that, but then it takes time to get out of that song again. So I would say as a, as a person in the congregation, not to be too worried about that because this is your personal time with the Lord. And you say, God, you'll speak to the leaders. You, you'll sort that out. But for you and me, yeah, I can feel that, Lord, that maybe that's not as anointed, but who cares? I love you. I worship you. I give you all the glory and, and God, will, God will sort out His church. It's actually a great point, just quickly. It, when you are choosing the songs for a praise and worship leader, it's so much more than just choosing a bunch of songs that you think are good. It, it's, it's about flowing with the Spirit. And that's why, you know, you've asked that question and Pastor Sam has answered, that sometimes the anointing of God might not feel like it's on that song for that service. And that's because God always has a plan in, in how He wants to flow in a meeting. And so that's why we've, we can't just do the songs, you know, religiously and, and, and hope for the best. We've got to allow ourselves to have a, a soft heart and be led by the Holy Spirit throughout the worship set because he might go, okay, now I wanna move away from this song straight to this song. So it might be a new way of thinking for you in your worship team, but I encourage you to really do that. Don't just get stuck to your structure, but allow yourself to be led by the Holy Spirit in your praise and worship. And you'll go to greater, greater places than you've ever been before. Another question over here. G'day, um, I'm Joseph. Uh, that's really weird. I've never talked in a big auditorium. So um, I was just wondering, do you guys do any rehearsals on Sunday leading up to a service? Or if not, um, how would you get ready for a, so for a set of songs or worship that night or day? Yeah, yeah great. So uh, our rehearsal is on Sunday. We, at the moment, we're not having much to do during the weeks. Um, but Sunday, uh, we might bump in, drummer come at 7, musicians 7.30, singers, and then we'll rehearse what we're going to do. We're going to pray, uh, we'll rehearse what the set is, and then we'll roll into church. And then we do the same thing in the afternoon. But um, we, with our team, whenever there's new songs, and um, uh, we really put a lot of effort into our, our demos so that we can send uh, them out to the team, put a lot of emphasis on saying to the team, hey, everyone learn exactly what you hear on the demo. So when we get together in our rehearsal time on Sunday, it's super effective. It's just like putting a jigsaw puzzle together. It's really uh, not time consuming most of the time. Um, it's it's pretty, pretty easy, just slot all those things together. Because it's, uh, it's, sorry, jump in there. Great answer there, Beach. Um, yeah, I think it's a culture we set from the very beginning that you know, when we started church 12 years ago, we never had a building to rehearse in. And, uh, and so it was a culture that we, we set with our team right from the very start that it is your responsibility to know your part. Coming to rehearsal is not your time to learn the part. That's your time to learn everyone else's part. You need to know your part by the time you get there. And, uh, and so Joth here, um, in his uh, magical abilities to play every instrument under the sun, will, um, oh, sorry, no, anointed abilities, um, will put together demos that are very clear of what each person needs to play. Um, so that when we come, we know what we're doing. So we don't have midweek rehearsals still these days. Now we have our own building, but we do have many midweek services. And, uh, and every time we come up to an event, we know the songs, we show up prepared, and uh, we have a wonderful time. We have a truly wonderful time. Uh, next question, over here. Hi, I'm Sam from Melbourne. Um, do you guys listen to, consciously decide to listen to different types of music to give you inspiration? Yeah? Yes. Yep, next question. No, just kidding. I, I'll answer quickly. Maybe you can all answer. I love just listening to anything that's well produced. I don't care what style it is. I used to hate country, but I'm finding I like it now. Not the don't, don't, but like, you know, the, the more moving country style. Do you like it? No, you don't like it? I don't know, it's, it so is a phenomenon. I'm proud of you right now. Yeah. Do you like country? Do yeah. I like yeah, but country? I just, love, I just think you can draw inspiration from anything that's done well. And so I love listening to all different styles. Yeah. Oh yeah, okay, cool. Yeah. No, I, I, go ahead. No, go ahead. I love stuff with great lyrical content. I'm, I'm always listening for great lyrical content. More than production, probably. Jo Joss' natural bend is toward production, but mine's lyrical. Yeah, I love to listen to everything. I don't necessarily write praise and worship, but I write a lot of our theatrical stuff. Which is a gift. And which is so much fun. 
and it's a crazy thing, but I love to listen to different theatrical music as well as different pop music and worship music and see how I can fuse that together to create a new sound. So that's what I'm loving doing right now. That's fun. Yeah. Yeah, and I Very do fun. too. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I don't. No, legit. Rudy, don't. Rudy's actually got... <laughs> He's got his double master's degree in double bass. He's very clever. Go figure that out. Double, double masters, masters in double bass. I don't know if that exists. No, nah, it doesn't. No, I, I don't actually listen to any other music. I listen to Planet Shakers demos. <laughs> yeah. It's actually That's not a true. Joke. It's that true. Is, is that not true? It's true. I just don't listen to music. Well, I don't know if anyone feels yeah, like this. I do that too. But you, our I life is to so the demos all the time too. It's, that's what oh you're about goodness. to say. Is what that's I'm what? about to say that's is that what? our life is so <laughs> consumed with music. So when you do get that t moment to yourself, you actually don't want to listen to music. You want to turn That's the car what? stereo off. No, I do. I like listening to music all the time. Okay, great. <laughs> <laughs> We've all got different uh, opinions. What makes Very one happy family? For you, Sam. Uh, next question over here, front row, Michael from southeast campus of Melbourne. Um, you obviously produce a lot of songs every year uh, to create an album, but how do you go introducing that to the church as a new song? How do we? You're down at the southeast. No. Just joking. Sorry, South East Melbourne, but not from Planet Shakers. Oh, okay. Right, 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 right. Oh, sorry, I was confused. South East okay. Campus. Right, 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 right. Well, kind of like what these guys said, we produce a demo. So, for instance, on a weekly basis, we, we try to write one song a week. Our aim this year is to have 52 songs. Not all of them will be done in church. Probably 25 of them will be done in church. And out of those 25, is, we choose about 10 of those, which become the conference songs. But if we say we write a song right now, which we could do that if we had more time, um, we will do a demo of the song. Once we think it's in, in its good, the best form it can be, we'll do a quick demo. We'll show it to Pastor Russell and Sam because they're the, you know, they're the leaders. If they say yes. I, I just need to interrupt. His quick demo means like a full on song with all the instruments and... Basically what you hear on radio. Yeah, yeah. But right. it's very quick. But yeah. I do okay, it quick. Yeah? I do it quick. He does it quick. Um, so we do a, a quick, amazing demo, and uh, we give it to Pastor Russell and Sam. Because when you do a demo, it's, you, you, you're packaging it, and you want to sell it in its best possible form. So, you know, you want to impress these guys. So do a good demo, seriously. Um, give the, the good demo that's done quick and to excellent degree to Pastor Russell and Sam. They will say yes or no, simple as that. If it's a no, it's fine. You don't get precious about it. Because we're looking for the touch of God on the song. That's what we're looking for. When that's we right. listen to it, can we feel God on the song? Yes. Not whether that song is catchy or whether we think it will work. We look for God's anointing on it. And in some cases, the song is anointed, but just not for right now. And so we've done it later on. So it, there's all different answers that go around. But so if it is a yes, we send it out to the team. And in some cases, we send it out on a Saturday night and say, hey, we're doing a new praise song tomorrow. Here it is. And the team come knowing it completely, perfectly on a Sunday morning. That's the culture in our church. Yeah. Who, who is on the Planet Shakers music team here? Put your hand up. And you can all testify that that's the truth, right? You, you sometimes get a, a text or an email late on Saturday night and we don't apologise for it because it's amazing. I love that culture. But our team has a wonderful attitude, I must say. They are incredible and respond with a great heart every time, learn the song and are there ready the next day. And we always talk about bringing people up to this bar that we've raised very high we don't want to lower the bar down here. That would include a lot of people, but it makes the standard drop bigger. And we want the best for people. We want to push people to become better. So we say, come up, rather than bring the bar down. But we're also in a wonderful predicament in Planet Shakers Church because um, Russell has a great honour and respect for music. Now, not all senior pastors are in that boat. They're more about the word and what they need to do as a pastor. And so sometimes it's a bit um, tricky, I suppose, to come under that kind of um, leadership because maybe you're the worship leader and you don't know, should I do this song or not, because you don't have that connection with your senior pastor. But I would encourage you to try and connect in a way so that you can um, bring the sound that your pastor wants in their church, you know. And so there's a great unity amongst um, all of our leadership. And so this is where I think Planet Shakers um, is powerful because the anointing comes down from the head. And so the head is making this decision. Um, yeah, I want this great song and I want this, you know, great drama and I want this great um, message. And, and so I don't, I don't really encourage you as musicians to get a great relationship happening with your senior leadership so that there's a great unity in your church.
So good. Steve, over here, got a question. Hello, I'm Tanya, and my home church is Horsham, Western Victoria. Awesome. Awesome. BJ used to be from Horsham. (laughs) Awesome. Uh, Before my time, but that's okay. Um, (laughs) So my question is more with bringing in dance and visual arts. Uh, How do you establish your dress code, uh, choreography, so it is of excellence and honouring God? Um, but at the same time, embracing what needs to be said. <laughs> yeah, I mean, as you, who, who's enjoyed the dancers? Um, they've done a great job. And have we ever had dancers at conference during the praise before? Not during the praise. I don't think we have. We've always had intros for dancers, but we thought it'd be, we started doing this at church, and there's so many people in church who, in our church who dance, and we thought this is such a great outlet for them to praise and worship God in this way. So Torini, who leads our dance team, has got you know six incredible dancers together, and they're doing such a great job. And, and really, it's you know we, we live in a day and age and a culture where there is so much dodgy dancing going on out in the secular world. But in the same breath, we're fighting because we want to be current in the church. So we've got to find that line where we can get that dance looking so edgy and so... Uh, you know, so it can relate to people coming, non-saved people coming in, unsaved people is the correct terminology, coming into the church and looking at it thinking it's cool, but in the same breath, making sure it's completely God glorifying because we don't want to go down that track where it's taken the wrong way. And in terms of dress code, we, 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 we want to dress our best for God, but then not dress to, um, what's the word? Yeah, we don't want to dress provocative, like Will Farrell says it, provocative. Um, I don't know, it's from a movie somewhere. Um, um, how he says it gets the people going. We don't want to do that. We don't want to get the people going in a bad way. We want to get the people going in a good way. We want to pray, get people praising God. Yeah. Somebody else talk. Yes, no. <laughs> just take over for a sec. I have a really great relationship with Torini, who heads up our dancing. And I think in any of these creative areas, um, if you've got um, a discipleship mindset that they're not just dancing, but you're discipling them in the ways of God and so um, understanding that our whole focus is getting to know God, getting to know His Word, being shaped and moulded by His standards and His way of life. And this whole discipleship throughout our church starts to influence these creative areas. And so that's where, you know, we we sort of have like a nice safety net in that the people that head these areas up have a great standard of living. They have a great understanding of what's appropriate. And, and so then they're instructing their teams in a great way. It's not, you shouldn't wear this and you shouldn't wear that. That's not it. It's about the condition of your heart. And so when your heart is right before God, you don't want to wear that and you don't want to wear that. Because we can put rules within the church, but when it's not a personal conviction, then we're always being the rule makers. And this is where people have this attitude about the church, oh, the church is all about rules. Well, no, it's not about rules. It's about a relationship with Jesus Christ. And when you come into right relationship with Him, You want to do things to please Him rather than I have to. And so that's where wonderful discipleship within the creative team will help bring about the right clothing, the right um, moves because people want to do the right thing. And then you're not becoming the police person that's saying don't do this and don't do that. And so like um, Chelsea heading up our creative side and... Uh, sorry, our drama side of things. You know, she's got a great standard of living, so she's going to naturally disciple her guys and girls in that way. And then it just flows. That's wisdom right there. That's good. Uh, question, yeah, that's where, you know, give a round of applause. That's worth it. You know, that's... Um, where, are you, where are you at, Jesse? Here you are down here. Hello, my name is Josh Fry from Impact Barossa. I just have a quick question about your backing tracks and click tracks you use. Um, how does that work on the stage? Is it, uh, or is it done from the back desk, or is there a combination between the piano, the bass, and the drums playing those? So basically, in our ears, we have a click going the whole time, which helps us 
in the intros of songs and starting the songs. Also, the great thing about that is we can do um, MD tracks on, on coming from there, so we can say verse, chorus, all that sort of stuff, so we never get lost in the song. Even give us little word prompts. Um, and we have a stereo set of tracks coming from there, uh, and then the click all goes to our ears. So um, Josh Ham is running that. It's, as soon as I pass to Sam myself, whoever's leading gives the cue for the next song, he just hits the next song. And uh, yeah, a lot of work goes into those tracks. Generally, there are a lot of like synth sounds and loops, stuff that we can't always replicate live is what happens on those tracks. You can actually get the tracks for Planet Shakers songs on multitracks.com as well. If there's a so Planet Shakers song that you want to do in your church and you want it to sound like Planet Shakers, you can buy the tracks from that website. It's multitracks.com and you can uh, download that and play it and it'll sound like it sounds in Planet Shakers. Hi, um, my name's Naomi, I'm from Croydon. Um, my question is more of a pastoral sort of a question and um, vision leading. I wanna know how you do that as a team with multiple campuses and even in just the direct music team as well. How do you roll out your vision? How do you keep community, um, pastoring, those sorts of things? Cool. Uh, so pastorally speaking, um, Vision-wise, Joth, myself, and Pastor Sam uh, sat down about two years. Is it two years? Musicianary statement. So we sat down about two years ago when Joth and I, um, when Joth took over the team, and I'm pastoring people. So we sat down and we said, "Well, what is the vision of this team?" Um, so we sat down together. So Pastor Sam, Pastor Russell, our senior leaders. So Joth and I, really listening to their heart. What is what, what, what are you seeing for this team, Pastor Russell, Pastor Sam? And, and so they so graciously let us contribute as well. And so we're finding all these scriptures. We sat down for like a day and really just nutted out this amazing vision statement. And um, anyone that comes onto our team now or if they're on our team, they get this document called the Musicianary Vision Statement. Uh, so Musicianary being a musician slash um, missionary. So you put those two words together, you got musicianary. And um, it's a very powerful document um, that has what we would expect from our team. It's very spiritual. It's very practical. There's so many scriptures in it. Um, there's so much um, very clear communication of what we would expect from our team. Um, something as... Um, something like lifestyle, the lifestyle of a worship leader, a worshipper, um, that kind of stuff. So that's, that's what we would do there. We have a discipleship once a month uh, where the whole team gets together. It's not uh, the Southeast campus. It's not the Geelong campus team. It's not, um, it, it's the whole team. This is Planet Shakers music team um, as a whole. And then I get the honour and privilege of having lunch with people, catching up with people during the week. I sit down, I talk with people, just see how they're going. We have a laugh, we have a cry, and we do life together. It's family and it's awesome. So you hear BJ use this word musicianary, and it's a weird word to some of you, but it's basically, it's a musician who's a missionary. And Cindy Jacobs came in and she delivered this amazing prophecy to our church and our worship team and said, God's gonna raise up musicianaries in the church. And that is exactly our heart. We don't wanna raise up musicians, just for the sake of good musicians, we want to raise up musicianaries that happen to play music. And, 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 that, and that's the best um, combination. So we come up with this music musicianary statement uh, that we declare over our team, which goes like this. We are musicianaries, powerful men and women of God that play skillfully unto the Lord, worshipping in spirit and in truth. With a heart of unity, we serve the church locally and around the world with our gifts. We exist to usher the body into a corporate and personal encounter with the living God. So that's pretty cool right there, yeah. So that's, that's, what we, that's the tone of our music team. That's what we exist for. Um, and that's pretty much it. Yeah, next question. Hey, uh, I'm Nathaniel from England. Came across for the conference. Uh, so, awesome, man. Yeah, it's really cool. Um, my question's kind of on culture. I'm kind of intrigued as to how uh, Planet Shakers found their sound in the first place. Because um, we're kind of, uh, our church locally, we're in a place where we're starting to write songs and this kind of thing. It's just interesting to, I guess, hear from you guys where you felt as though you established your sound, where it came from, how it's grown to the place it is now. And then kind of the second fold, how you then 
translate that as musicians change on a regular Sunday kind of thing? So when, Joth, you're not leading worship, those kind of things, how have you um, kind of established a culture where other people can slip in and it feels as though every Sunday is consistent to itself as you've established your sound? Uh, does that kind of make sense? Yeah, for sure. I mean, Pastor Sam, you're the only one who's been there for here from the start. So why don't you talk about the, how the style has changed and set? I oh, know, I'm the oldest one. So back in the day, long, long time ago, um, look, it first, I suppose, came out of um, our youth group and our youth were into... I suppose, crazy kind of music secularly. So there was that kind of influence of very contemporary kind of songs, you know, that people would be listening to. It's probably punk, rock, and even ska. <laughs> Remember, no, anyone know what ska music is? <laughs> Brass. I don't know what, who came up with that. But. but anyway, so we had this bunch of musicians that, you know, were, were a bit crazy and a bit raw. And so when um, Russell and I were leading the youth group back then, um, we were really trying to, I suppose, convert these musicians into um, not following what the world would say, but to tap into God and use their gifts and their abilities just to really worship God. And so we had to convince them because they would say, oh, church music's so boring, I don't connect to it. And so we went, I suppose, on a discipleship um, process with these guys to say, well, surely God's the creator of everything and He is the most creative being ever in existence. So surely you could tap into God and God could start to download to you the sound of heaven. But that same sound would be a sound that would connect um, people that don't know the Lord to Jesus. And so it really started so raw and so crazy back then and and so these guys started to write these songs and yeah they were what we would say contemporary they sounded like the sound that you would hear on the radio not because we were copying that but because these guys were from uh, had been previously influenced but they were trying to make this transition into bringing the sound of heaven in a language of the day and so then it just started to evolve from there and all Always our heart in our worship is we want to connect with God, but we also want the world to hear God's voice. And so the world have a certain viewpoint of God and the church that it's boring, it's irrelevant, it doesn't speak to me. And so we wanted to start speaking the language of the day through music because we really believe that music is a very powerful medium. And so this is where this communication started in that we wanted the church to worship the Lord, but we also wanted the world to go, hey, I can identify with that. That sound, I feel comfortable here. I don't feel like, you know, I'm not good enough. I'm not holy enough for church or God. And, and so, yeah, we've been on this progression, I suppose, to bring the sound of heaven, but speaking the language of the day. And so... We've also had many songwriters, so that's been important as well to keep our flavour, um, uh, I don't know, tasty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's true. <laughs> yeah, lots of spices and salt and pepper and Spice. stuff like that, you know, to make the food flavoursome. That's like having lots of songwriters that will come and bring their sound. Oh, okay, thanks, bye. <laughs> And then, and the style keeps morphing. If I asked you the question, what style is Planet Shaker's music today? What would you say? Pop alternative, what else? Electronic, rock, pop, even a little bit of country in the worship. It's a massive fusion of all these styles. And I love that about Planet Shaker's music because it, there's different parts of it that relate to everyone. It's not just one style and, and it only relates to a certain pocket and they get bored with it. But we're always searching for new sounds. And because we have that such broad genre, we can kind of dive into any style. We can pull out a bit of country. We can pull out a bit of, even though he really doesn't like country, but I'm warming to it. Um, we can pull out a bit of country. We can pull out a bit of pop. We can pull out a bit of electronic music, wh whatever. And we just create. We have no boundaries um, and we're not boxed in, in in our creativity, which is how it should be, I believe. Um, we, just, we just create. Okay, another question over here, Stefano. Okay, um, so when you teach your disciple, like, be the 
build up next generation, but if the person doesn't have a passion for serving a church, how do you encourage them? Or like sometimes you have to say things that you don't want to say, but how do you tell them? We have this thing at Planet Shakers um, that's called the slapping ministry. And it's actually Pastor Sam in a black hood, so no and one can see. She just runs past and slaps people. It's powerful. Now, we have this thing at Planet Shakers called DNA. And, um, and we, we believe very much that we're called to make disciples. Uh, we're not called to build a crowd, we're called to build disciples who follow Jesus. And, uh, and so one of the things, one of the gifts that God gave us when we started church was this little thing that we call DNA. Now we all know DNA is the building blocks of our body, um, but we use that name to say it's the very foundation of what it is to be a, a disciple, to be a planet shaker in a planet shaker's church. And so um, we've had people that have come to our church before because they wanna be on stage. We've had people that have come simply because they wanna play in the band. And the response for anyone who wants to serve from the person serving out in the car park to the person preaching up on stage and anywhere in between is, all right, we'll come and do DNA course. And our DNA is where we, we, uh, we teach our church about the call of Planet Shakers, what it is to be a Planet Shaker. It's about the kingdom cultures that we believe what we're called to live our life as. And, uh, and we finish with this powerful encounter day where we commission people to serve in church, to, to win their worlds, to empower their generation. And, uh, and so we just encourage every person to go through DNA. It's, it's very simple. And, uh, and so no one who is standing on this stage can get on here without doing DNA first. And, uh, and so we know of some people that have started doing the DNA course, they might do one night, they might do two nights, but for them to commit to a full semester of doing the DNA course is seven nights over 14 weeks. Um, if their main motivation is simply be on stage, their heart is gonna get exposed in going through the discipleship process. And so uh, we, we place a high, you've heard us talk a lot already, we place a high emphasis on pe people's music, musical skill, but of course we place a high value as well on people's heart and their motivation. And, uh, and so we would all consider ourselves a, a disciple of Jesus before we would consider ourselves musicians. And so that's a culture that we build in the team before anyone even steps onto stage. And, uh, and so it gives us great confidence that anyone who's coming up here is coming up here with the right motivation and the right intentions. So, great add? answer, Pastor Rudy. We've got time for two more questions. And so second last question over here. Hello, um, I go to uh, the City Road um, campus. My name's Owen. And uh, I'm just wondering um, how it's possible to get involved in the um, creative uh, process at uh, Planet Shakers Church. What is the, the process? What, what steps do you take to, you know, if, if you uh, create something, for example, um, how is it possible to show it to um, someone. Great. Are you talking in a music sense or a visual like design sense? Design, yeah. Design, yeah. Well, we, we have um, different ministries. So we have our music ministry, we have our, what we call media, um, and our, what else do we, what do we call it? Production min ministry. We, we, we like to call them ministries as opposed to departments as well, because, you know, it just gives it a better feel. Um, we, we, they, we have emails for those different uh, ministries. <laughs> I nearly called it departments after all that. Uh, we have, we have email, emails that um, specifically go to the leaders of that. So if you wanted to get involved musically, you would send an email to music team at Planet Shakers or what we have auditions at Planet Shakers and uh, then we get the ball rolling that way. Same thing with, with the media. You, you send an email to media at planetshakers.com and you, know, you express your interest and show them what you, know, you can do. And uh, we want every person to be activated in their giftings in serving in church. It's the best thing for people to do to, you know, put, get their roots down deep and serve and, and do what they're good at and do what they're called to do as the best kind of service. So we'd encourage you to do that. Anyone want to add anything to that? Chelsea does. I was just going to say, if their emails are overwhelming, just remember music at planetshakers.com. Yes. For everything. You can go on the website and all the emails are listed oh, there. Oh, that works too. Never mind. Stephen. <laughs> Hi, um, I'm Jane from Melbourne. My question is just about um, when you guys are on tour, how does that work? Because sometimes, for example, I'll see um, one of the team in Manila and then I see them on Sunday. So I'm just wondering if you guys, like how do you 
operate the whole clones. Tour. We have lots of clones. <laughs> lots of clones. We have a pretty tight schedule though too. We might fly in from somewhere one night and then be ministering the next morning. So sometimes we do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I remember last year, all, all of us were in Manila on a Thursday and a Friday night. And then BJ and I... Uh, I think we went to bed at about 1 a.m., separate beds, and then... Um, <laughs> Good clarification. <laughs> five, and then woke up at 3 a.m. to get on a plane to travel all day to be home for church on Sunday, uh, and you guys continued on tour because we'd been away for a couple of weeks already. Yeah. And, uh, but no, for, for us, uh, church, church is our home base. Church is um, our, our grounding and our foundation, and so... For us, church has to be good. Otherwise, we can't go out on the road because what we do on the road is an overflow yeah. Hello. Hello. Of, um, of simply what God is doing in, in church. Come on. And, um, and so we... Uh, <laughs> stop it, guys. Um, so yeah, we, we will travel through the night if that's what it means to be yeah. home on a Sunday to, to, uh, to make sure home base is strong. Um, if we're all away. But yeah, we do try and balance the teams that are travelling. Some will travel, some will stay, and then uh, we'll rotate for the next tour and things like that. But uh, great question. Yeah, because some people find it hard to believe about Planet Shakers isn't a band, that it's actually ch- a church. So we'll go somewhere overseas and they'll go, oh, where's the bass player or where's the, that guitarist? Oh, yeah, they're at home. And that's what we feel is one of the most powerful things about Planet Shakers. It's our church. And it's our church going out, being sent out, not some independent band just doing its own thing, but the church ministering to the church. And that's where I think, you know, Planet Shakers has kept its um, integrity as well, uh, having that great focus because we're all covered by a church and... um, yeah. Okay, cool. Well, that's all we have time for in terms of our questions. But we love to also finish every well episode with a line of advice. And hopefully this will bless somebody. And so each of us are going to tell you a great thing to do this weekend in your church, in your uh, ministry. So let's start with... DJ, because <laughs> he always takes the longest. Uh, no, not really. Uh, so, um, uh, Ooh. is there a delay? Uh, no. Okay, so here's what you're going to do this week as you hear from the Lord. Why don't you implement whatever you hear from the Lord this week? This is your burning bush. Turn away from everything at home. Focus on Him. Listen, implement. You'll be great. Awesome. Oh, that's nice. That's nice. Good job. Thank you, guys. My line of, of advice would be everything that you receive from Awakening, whether you're watching online or in the building, take all of that and pour it all out this Sunday at your church. Let your praise be poured out, your worship be poured out, the encounter that you personally had with God throughout the week. Let it bless someone else at your church. And don't forget, register for Blind Shakers 2017. That's it. <laughs> Well, my piece of advice, going off the back of what Pastor Samuel was talking about before, Pastor Sammy, don't let the fear of, Pastor Sam, there's so many Sams, it's so confusing. My part of advice for you is don't let the fear of failure keep you from stepping out and everything that God wants for your life. If you feel like there's been something you've been afraid to do because you've been afraid to fail at it, maybe this is your time to step into the overflow of what God's doing here and move into something new. Right. My piece of advice for you this week is listen to more country music. Amen. No, man. Um, No, man. Um, Do what you want. No, my piece of advice for you this week is to rehearse. Um, Rehearse at home. Learn your part at home. Um, Learn it. And so when you get to church on a Sunday for rehearsal, you can learn everyone else's part. And when it gets to the service, you can focus on worshipping God because you know your stuff and God is good. That is good. I think that's worth a round of applause, Rudy. Oh, I mean, I think, that's, I think that's great. 
My advice would be for you to really stir up the encouragement in your team this Sunday, like I talked about, encouraging your production guys. Encourage each other. Let there be a great atmosphere of encouragement. You know, help the, the production guys roll up the mic cables if, if that needs to be done. You know, just have that heart of servant. And I also want to encourage everyone here to write in questions to the well at planetshakers.com so on future episodes we can um, answer them for you. So write that down, the well at planetshakers.com. That's the email. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you to thank you. Chelsea and Rudy for joining thank us, you. special guests. We're having a great time here at Planet Shakers Awakening. Let's get ready for an amazing rest of the week. Thanks for joining us today.